A peculiar bass relief believed to be probably the oldest narrative scene. In southern Turkey, researchers have stumbled across what is possibly the earliest known narrative scene. The archaeological site of Seeberg discovered an 11,000-year-old years old, a rather peculiar bas-relief depicting two men. One of them is holding something like a rattle in his hands, which he seems to be pointing at the bull standing next to him. The second man immortalized on the relief is surrounded by leopards and holds in his hand his penis. Finds depicting scenes from the lives of people from centuries ago are nothing new. However, this recently discovered in Turkey has stunned researchers mainly because it is probably the oldest story presented in the form of a bas relief but also because of what is immortalized on it the figures on the bas relief seem to create a coherent narrative of a man fighting with dangerous animals these figures carved together to represent a narrative are the first known examples of such a holistic scene, said archaeologist Dr. Alam Ozdegan of Istanbul University. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Antiquity. The scene in question was carved into a stone wall and was found at the archaeological site of Seeberg, located in southeastern Turkey. Excavations at this site have been conducted since 2021. While this particular site is located under one of the modern villages in the province of Şanlıurfa. Archaeological research carried out there showed that the site was inhabited during the Neolithic period, probably in the 9th millennium BC. It is known that at that time there was a gradual transition from hunter-gatherer societies to those leading a settled life and engaged in e.g. agriculture. Archaeologists discovered several residential buildings in this place, but also a structure serving the entire community, where its members probably gathered at particularly important moments for them. There were even benches along the walls of this room, both in this and in other buildings. Various images of animals and people were found, but only in the case of one found near the benches mentioned above, they formed a coherent narrative. So far, no others of a similar nature have been found. The age of the discovered scene from the life of this early farming community is estimated at as much as 11,000 years ago. Years. Making it the oldest narrative scene in history. Dr. Alam Ostigan supposes that the characters placed in it were somehow unique to the members of this community and were an important element of its tradition. The scene immortalized in stone depicts quite specific interactions of people of that time with wild animals. The exaggeration of certain features of the latter was probably aimed at emphasizing how dangerous of them the figures depicted in this bas-relief had to deal with. 
On the left side of the stage we see a man crouching and holding a rattle or a snake in his hand, and opposite him stands a bull with huge horns. What we see on the right is quite peculiar and puzzling. There is another man surrounded on both left and right by leopards with huge teeth. This cornered man at the same time holds his stomach with one hand, and with the other, his phallus. It is difficult to understand the meaning of this scene. But perhaps the discovery of more similar scenes will shed new light on it. So far. The building in which it was found has only been partially excavated. So it is possible that archaeologists will also come across other such images of people and animals. Platforms, pyramids and hundreds of kilometers of roads. Nearly 1,000 Mayan settlements have been discovered in Guatemala. In northern Guatemala, scientists have discovered nearly 1,000 previously unknown settlements, which together cover an area of about 1,685 square kilometers and are connected by 177 kilometers of ancient roads. The discoveries were made using LIDAR, an aerial laser scanning technology that has made spectacular discoveries before. A team of scientists from several American institutions, in collaboration with their French and Guatemalan colleagues, discovered 964 settlements connected by a network of roads in a vast area of northern Guatemala. Scholars believe that the buildings date back to the pre-classic period, which lasted from about 1000 BC. By 200 CE in an article published in the journal Ancient Mesoamerica, the group described their research using LIDAR technology. LIDAR light detection and ranging, is a detection system similar to radar, but based on laser light rather than radio waves. In recent years, it has been used to map dense tropical forests in search of traces of ancient civilizations. The lasers used in such systems are able to penetrate vegetation and water. Thanks to this breakthrough technology, scientists are able to digitally remove the tree canopy and the top layer of vegetation from images, revealing hidden structures roads and other places of interest to archaeologists. LIDAR allows you to survey huge areas in a short time and with unprecedented accuracy. Otherwise, similar research would take months and would certainly not be done so carefully. LIDAR doesn't mean archaeologists aren't on site, but they know where the most interesting places are and where to go after seeing the aerial scan image. LIDAR has already proven its usefulness. In 2018, with the help of this technology, in the Guatemalan jungle, the ruins of over 60,000 houses. Palace
palaces and other structures that had been hidden from the sight of modern man for centuries were discovered. Thanks to Ladar, archaeologists also revealed the true size of the 40,000-year-old city of Angamako, found a decade ago. Buildings and other structures. Thanks to this technology, the oldest and largest Mayan building, hundreds of ceremonial complexes from thousands of years ago, and the ruins of eleven cities and settlements belonging to an unknown culture were discovered. Scientists have used Ladar technology over densely forested areas of northern Guatemala to cut through the overgrown vegetation and reveal forgotten, ancient structures. While studying the Ladar record, they stumbled upon what they described as a vast, ancient Mayan civilization. The Ladar study revealed an unusually dense distribution of Mayan structures, many of which are directly or indirectly connected by an extensive network of causeways, the researchers wrote in the paper. Previously, archaeologists assumed that this corner of the Mayan Empire was sparsely populated, but the complexity of the newly discovered sites suggests otherwise. The amount of work involved in building the massive platforms, palaces, dams, causeways and pyramids suggests the involvement of thousands of workers, the researchers said in the publication. The construction of so many settlements with many buildings, connected by roads, required highly qualified specialists, builders, architects, logistics specialists and even representatives of law enforcement agencies. They all acted with one goal in mind, the researchers point out. Among the many architectural surprises revealed by Ladar, researchers single out the astonishing network of causeways as one of the crowning glory of the ancient Maya. In total, the team identified 133 kilometers of roads connecting different settlements, with a further 38 kilometers of dikes. The existence of such extensive road connections, the researchers indicate, allowed people to visit other settlements frequently, while also facilitating the collective effort that went into the creation of settlements and dikes. Large platforms and pyramids have been identified in some places, suggesting that they may have served as political centers. Interestingly, the community living in the newly discovered settlements was characterized by a love of physical activity. 
because a total of 30 sports fields were found throughout the system. The researchers also concluded that the population density in the discovered area was significant. This finding contradicts theories suggesting that early Mesoamerican settlements tended to be sparsely populated. In addition, the existence of a large population also required an ingenious water supply system. Scientists have discovered 195 artificial reservoirs, as well as a network of canals to transport water throughout the region. Monumental architecture, consistent formats, defined site boundaries, water harvesting facilities, and dike roads suggest an investment in a workforce that is at odds with the organizational capabilities of smaller communities and potentially reflects pre-classic management strategies. The authors of the paper point out the new findings shed light on the people who have lived in the bustling settlements of this forested area for more than 1,000 years. Scientists hope that future research will uncover more mysteries of this ancient civilization and perhaps hitherto unknown settlements that remained hidden for many centuries. How and when did we domesticate cats? Genetic studies of cats from around the world have helped determine how cats were domesticated by people living in ancient Mesopotamia about 10,000 years ago. Years ago, according to scientists, this happened in the region of the so-called Fertile Crescent at a time when there was a change in the lifestyle of our ancestors, according to new research. The bond between humans and cats was most likely initiated by a change in the lifestyle of our ancestors, evidence from new genetic research shows. However, it is not so easy to determine exactly when humans first attempted to domesticate cats. Genetic research came to the aid of scientists. Researchers looked at the genotypes of more than 1,000 cats from Europe, Asia and Africa, focusing on nearly 200 genetic markers that established links between areas and breeds. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Heredity. In principle, we should talk about cats as semi-domesticated animals. This is because while for example, dogs or farm animals have become largely dependent on us. Cats left on their own are still able to fend for themselves. They are still able to hunt. And being around humans has not suppressed their natural instincts. Humans, on the other hand, have not significantly changed their behavior.
It is estimated that the first close relationship between people and cats was formed around 10,000 years ago. Years ago, when we changed our lifestyle from a hunter-gatherer to a more sedentary one. Then our ancestors took up agriculture. And people of that time noticed that cats eliminate pests, rodents. While in the case of horses and cattle we can find different locations and moments when they were domesticated, in the case of cats it seems that there is only one time and place. According to scientists, the first domestication of cats took place in the area of the so-called Fertile Crescent. This name refers to the area located in the Middle East, mainly in the vicinity of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. It was from there that the common path of cats and people was to begin. But how did scientists determine this? Researchers at the University of Missouri's College of Veterinary Medicine collected DNA samples from cats found in and around the Fertile Crescent as well as those found in Europe, Asia and Africa. They then compared around 200 different genetic markers. Two in particular have proven useful. Microsatellite sequences and single nucleotide polymorphisms. The former mutate very quickly and are useful in the context of studying the cat population over the last few hundred years, while in the case of the latter, we are dealing with single changes in the entire genome, which gives scientists clues as to the changes that have occurred in cats over thousands of years. It is interesting to note how much the cat populations living in different areas have diversified genetically over the centuries, e.g. European cats differ significantly from Asian ones. However, this research may also be relevant to human health, as some conditions, such as polycystic kidney disease, affect both our species and cats. Using genetic tools, building DNA databases, sequencing the feline genome, and collaborating with breeders, the researchers managed to significantly reduce the incidence of this condition in Persian cats. These similarities between cats and humans can be used to develop new treatments. Research is currently being conducted to treat this condition with a proper diet, which would certainly be a better alternative to the use of drugs that can lead to